Sunday's accord has already prompted disagreement about enrichment, the process that turns uranium gas into nuclear fuel, and at much higher levels, potentially a nuclear weapon. Iran insists the agreement recognizes its national right to enrich uranium. Secretary of State John Kerry, however, had this to say. There also seems to be a clear difference between the United States and Iran on this issue of whether they have the right to enrich uh, uranium. Does the U.S. respect and recognize that right of Iran's? Yes or no? No, there is no right to enrich. We do not recognize a right to enrich. But under the terms of this agreement, there will be a negotiation over whether or not they could have a very limited, completely uh, verifiable, extraordinarily constrained program where they might have some medical research or other things they could do, but there is no inherent right to enrich. From nuclear ambitions in Iran to so-called nuclear options on Capitol Hill, it's been a very busy few days in Washington. Washington. We're even facing a new British invasion, this time at the post office. More about that later. Here to break down what's been happening and what comes next is Jackie Kucinich. She's Post TV's Capitol Hill correspondent. Also here with us, Robert Trainum. He's a political analyst for MSNBC. And joining us again from his studio is Pete Dominic. He's the host of Sirius XM Stand Up with Pete Dominic. Thanks so much for being here. Happy this is going to be a yeah, that's right. Turkey. Turkey. Turkey Day is coming up. <laughs> but first, uh, nuclear uh, agreements in Iran. Robert, I want to go first to you on this. Republicans' reaction to this uh, has been swift and severe. What do you make of it? Uh, you know, I think they have every right to be somewhat skeptical. Here's the reason why. Number one, you know, you need to verify all of these things. And, you know, Iran, uh, this current regime is somewhat new, but the, the previous regimes, as we know, have taken our hostages back in 1979. They're the ones who called uh, or said Israel should be wiped off the face of the earth. Right. They're the ones who said that the Holocaust and I think did in not. Some ways still, I mean, the, absolutely. I totally still absolutely. believe that. So, ha so having said that, you know, there's a lot of things here that need to be verified. There are right. a lot of things that need to be trust. And, you know, and look, I take, um, I, I think President Obama and Secretary Kerry are right when they say that every American has the right to be skeptical about this. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, as I said before, this is a regime that has continued to play cat and mouse, not over the last five or 10 years, but over the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, Pete, one of the most, I think, interesting, odd reactions to this uh, from some quarters has been sort of the wag the dog theory of this, right? That somehow Obama has orchestrated this whole thing to take attention off of uh, the, the botched Obamacare rollout. What do you make of that? Well, it's funny to see David Plough's response, of course, to President Obama's campaign say, oh, really, how about a war in Iraq for Dog. Now, I don't agree with that. This is a, a, a really historic issue. 30 years in the making. I'm pretty sure President Rouhani didn't get elected having to do with something with Obamacare. I'm pretty sure the Iranians aren't worried about the Obamacare website. This agreement has been scheduled and has been being negotiated, and the timing, it's just ridiculous. And furthermore, you know, I'm sitting in front of a whole bunch of books, none of which have really I've read. They're just here to <laughs> make it smart to you. But a lot of those books are written about uh, Iraq and the disaster that was. And, and I've got a whole list of people I've stopped listening to on these issues. And Lindsey Graham and John McCain and a bunch that rooted for a war in Iraq are them. Secretary of State John Kerry's got nothing to lose anymore. He's not running for president. He's taking more risks than Hillary Clinton. He's doing a pretty good job on this. This is a big, big deal. And, yeah, the word trust is a big issue. But we're going we're gonna to wait and see. And uh, this is a huge, huge development that most of us really don't understand because we keep hearing the word enrichment which I keep thinking about bread. <laughs> Jackie, uh, Congress not happy about being left out in, in some ways. And uh, Pete, of course, mentioned uh, Lindsey Graham, but Chuck Schumer also is like, uh, you know, he, he feels like there are going to be votes in the Senate and possibly uh, impose new sa sanctions. Congress's role in this. What do you think? Well, and if Congress, if Congress does pass a bipartisan, um, uh, uh, what's what I'm looking for, measure, yeah. that would, that would, put more sanctions on Iran while this deal is still in, in yeah, it, it, it would 
completely undermine what the White House is doing, and they've showed a willingness to do this before. Yeah. Remember Syria, what the White House wanted to do one thing, said, no, Congress, it's up to you, and Congress said no. Yeah. So yeah. this, his Democratic allies aren't afraid to buck him on foreign policy, and they're probably watching that. I would imagine Senator Kerry, or former Senator Kerry, Secretary Kerry, has been making calls to his allies in Congress to try to get everybody to be a little bit guy. quiet. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. one elephant in the room, and that's Israel. Um, and they are obviously a very, very strong strategic partner of ours. Benjamin Netanyahu is very concerned about this deal. He has called it a historic mistake. Absolutely, which is a slap in the face to the president. And we also know that they do not have, the president and Benjamin Netanyahu do not have the very best relationship. Yeah, they spoke yesterday by briefly, phone. Briefly, briefly. Right. And the question becomes, if in fact this does not work out six months from now, what does this mean militarily? What does this mean diplomatically? That's the real million dollar question. We're going to move on a bit. Uh, speaking of bad relationships, we'll move on to Congress here in this, uh, the <laughs> nuclear option, right? Yeah. That was uh, invoked uh, last week. Senator R Rand Paul came out, and here is what he tweeted in the voice of Senator Reid, of course. Senator Reid sends a message, he says, uh, that S Senator Reid is essentially saying, I'm in charge, I'm a bully, I'm going to get my way or change the rules. Uh, Jackie, what do you make of what we have seen out of Congress? Well, this is the culmination of a very long period of Congress really, sides not really liking each other. Yeah, yeah. And this actually strengthens the president's hand because his uh, nominees aren't going to be facing this 60-vote um, threshold right, anymore. Right. And you so, saw Reid partying with liberals, right? A lot of liberal activists after this happened. Well, and the danger here is, of course, the Senate does change hands. Yes. And if it does, you can imagine Republicans might take this a step further, make it apply to Supreme Court nominees, because yeah. right now it doesn't. Yeah, a yeah. And, it, and, I, and I can't imagine they won't, because this is a precedent that has changed a long history, and they tend to take precedents and run with them. <laughs> yes, Robert, uh, it could very well come ba back to bite Democrats uh, in the you-know-what, and, oh, and, you know, the, the six Six senators. I mean, that separate that. You know, that's that's the majority. Uh, you know, right me. Now I, I remember back in nineteen or back in two thousand and three and two thousand and four when I was in the United States Senate. We had this very same conversation about changing the rules. Yeah. And a lot of Republican senators says we do not want to do that. And here are the reasons why. And the reason why is because Democrats were holding uh, Republican nominees, whether right. it be Edith Clarence Brown and so forth. And so, to Jackie's point, this does set an unbelievable precedent, and thus in the process, it could come back and, and hurt the Democrats. Well, and you, it, the, one of the interesting things, if I could add, is the younger senators were yeah. the ones right. that were, that were, were pressuring yeah. Reid on this. They're yeah. the ones who on wanted to change well, on the Democratic side. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and so that, that's another aspect of this. It's so interesting that the people who have been there the longest were the ones who were pressing for this. Uh, Pete, what do you make? I mean, some people argue, well, now maybe things will work a little bit better uh, in the Senate. Obama will be able to get some of these judges and executive uh, appointees passed. Uh, more quickly, what do you make of, of that idea? You know, you'll have people who'll be honest and won't be partisan on the right that say, "Listen, the president has the right to appoint who he wants to these agencies and to these uh, to these courts. The every that's every president's prerogative. This president hasn't been able to do much of anything. They've been using the filibuster uh, more than it's ever been used, and they're certainly not going to get any legislation passed. We understand that, even on immigration, which Republicans desperately need to do something on." So the, this took a risk and said, you know what, we've got these making these appointments are going to make this administration in its second term a lot more productive. But it is interesting to see a senator like Carl Levin, Levin who's, been, Levin, who's been there for like 200 years, be one of the only Democrats to say, you know what, I've seen this. I've seen the Senate change hands. This is a bad idea. Uh, and some of the new senators say, forget about it. We've got to be able to break uh, this stranglehold that Republicans have, even though we have the majority. I'm just glad something's going to be getting done, whether or not it's good or bad, who knows. And in some ways, this could be the last hurrah for Democrats, right? Because they are in danger of losing the Senate uh, next year. Yeah, I think Senator Reid, he's a boxing guy. I, yeah. I think he sat down and looked at the map and looked at the perhaps maybe the historical or the political conjecture moving forward and says, you know what, this is probably our best chance to do this. Yeah. The ends probably justify the means. Let me just correct Pete here just for a few moments. I mean, the Constitution does say that the Senate does have to advise and consent. Right. Now, that doesn't say they should filibuster unless, obviously, the, the nominee is, is unqualified, but the Senate does have a role here.
Yeah, uh, we're going to move on to Obamacare, that other big issue. Lots of moving uh, deadlines at this point. Some good news, at least, uh, out of the states. There's sort of a November surge into, uh, in terms of the amount of people who've been able to sign up on these state-run marketplaces. Uh, 173,268 federal marketplace, uh, 26,794 total is 200,000, up from 106,000 uh, uh, on November 2nd. Some good news, Robert, at least out of the states, on Obamacare. <laughs> that's is, good. Is Obama going to have a surge as well? But the states were never the problem. Right. Well, that's right. right. Yeah. That, that, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. good, but that's yeah. not great. I mean, when you take a look at California, which is obviously densely populated, when you take yeah. a look at Vermont, that, that, those are good numbers. Yeah. However, to Jackie's point, that was never that's the problem. True. Right. However, the, the, the devil's in the details here, and young people, individuals under the age of 30, are not signing up. And if, in fact... In some of the states they are, but not at the not, rate... Not yeah. proportionally that right. that's going to be able to help this. And right. so, to that point, if, in fact, young people do not sign up, probably within the next year or so, this very well could crush under its own weight. Pete, what's your sense? Can Obama get his groove back? He's got about a 42% approval rating. These are like post-Katrina numbers, I think 55% disapproval. Uh, what does he have to do to have his own surge? Uh, Leah, please don't tell me you're making the Katrina comparison. Well, I, <laughs> well I'm just, I, I, it's more of a sort of, uh, it's not even a, a the it's, it's, it's sort of a, a timing thing after Katrina. I mean, it was around the same time. Well, yeah, and, but I just want to be clear. In one of those, lots of people lost their lives. This is an effort to save lives. And no, so I, I've been really pushing back on that comparison. But I, will he get his groove back? I, I absolutely think so. And we're all paying attention to this issue, the enrollment numbers day to day, news cycle to news cycle. But I like to take the long view because then we really know what's going to happen. And if you look back at what happened with Medicare and the signups, Medicare Part D as well, how that was a troubled rollout. And Robert just mentioned we're not seeing enough young people signing up. He's right about that. They're going to sign up. If you're, if you're a young person and your parents are telling you you have to get health insurance, I remember that. And guess what? If you need it and it's going to be more affordable and more robust, which is going to be the case, even though we're not reported on that because that's what's supposed to happen. We report on the exceptions. You're going to get health insurance. This is going to be a very, very popular system. And I predict, I predict, and I've never been right ever in a prediction, Nia, <laughs> for next year, uh, President Obama is going to have his group back. His approval rating is going to be high. And Obamacare and the website are going to be working. Oh, my goodness. Jackie, can you imagine uh, what Democrats are actually going to want to be seen with Obama on the stump in 2014? He is campaigning. In Kentucky. Behind, in, in Kentucky, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kentucky, yeah, that's right, because they, they've, they've had, got the... They've had a lot of success in Kentucky with yeah. the, their state. Kay Hagan? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. I don't Landrew? Th doubtful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, think, I think a lot of, well, Landrew is uh, one of the few Democrats in the in competitive states who has embraced the Affordable Care Act and who really has defended her vote and really been forceful about yeah. that. So maybe Mary Landrew, I doubt it, though. Right. I, right. I, think, I think Republicans are going to keep trying to make this an election issue in 2014 and in 2016 if they still can. It, and, and this rollout is helping them do that.